this is Doug Sewell here at the PRS Amp Department, and more specifically, my little area here where I do my R&D work. Just wanted to tell you kind of how the process goes with uh, with my particular work and job. Um, we uh, come over here. We can see circuit changes. This is a uh, some notes that Paul gave me. Um, on an amp that we uh, we might or might not uh, uh, come to fruition with. Uh, uh, I formerly an architect, so I work heavily with uh, CAD. Uh, here's a here's a little uh, CAD drawing that I have been working on. Uh, you know, changes in different colors just to keep me keep me honest. And uh, I take these and I uh, I work uh, layouts. For uh, maybe new models or whatever, this particular amp is a PR signature amp, and so um, everything I do, I try to document. It's very important to do that, and uh, so uh, having drafting skills has really helped me to to do that. I haven't had to rely on uh, a drafting department or anything. So we take these and we uh, say we're going to do a prototype. I just blank chat these. I can uh, actually uh, sign these things out and uh, do the drilling and that type of thing to get one going and kind of build it up from scratch. Uh, we have uh, a couple amps around that are prototype amps, but uh, suffice it to say, it's just kind of a neat process of creation. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, similar to putting the building together, it's just a little smaller. Um, I try to integrate uh, the artistic side of things with the scientific side of things, which is what I did with the buildings. I worked with engineers, and, um, and we provided the, uh, the aesthetics, and we married them together. And a lot of times, you don't get uh, that similar uh, process done with, with an industrial design product. So um, hopefully, they're both attractive and sound good. So anyway, um, moving on to things like component selection. Um, Paul and I are famous for taking an element of a of an amp. Say, let me just grab. A, uh, actually, this is a super douse. I'm sorry. Uh, and you'll see, you know, there are not a lot of similarities with the component selections. And Paul and I literally take each spot and try ten different caps or 10 different potential groups, um, make, brand, it doesn't matter, price, it doesn't matter, um, and we, uh, we'll find one that sounds the best in that spot, we will uh, then tweak the rest of the circuit, it's all a big interaction, by the end of the, end of the process, you can see that it's, uh, a lot of times it doesn't look very uniform, but uh, I think it's, uh, you know, the design and the tone that we're trying to achieve is uh, everything inside is all subservient to that. We're not, we're not basing things on, you know, making all the caps look the same or making all the resistors the same. And, and, uh, and our actually pricing is something that uh, we're not going to allow pricing of an individual component to, uh, to, to uh, mess with the tone. So you have things like $10 cap here and a $30 cap here and a $0.30 cent cap right here and a $3 cap here and um, uh, when it all shakes down at the end, uh, we, uh, we'll do some evaluation but when it's set, we, we, uh, we don't mess with it. And, uh, and so uh, sometimes it can mean that the price is a little higher and uh, we also can rewire 90% of these ends. Um, we have three different kind of prices that we currently have with models. It's a 25th anniversary amp, and it's a you know eight-inch thick board of uh, real tough Garolite that um, we actually insert and insert the eyelets and tap them in ourselves, which is just you know like one end of the spectrum. Uh, our hand-wired amps, um, higher-end line of amps. We, we kind of emulate the same process with uh, actual PC construction, but we use real thick traces 
and uh, the pads are done in a very similar fashion to what we would do the uh, the eyelets on the, the totally hand wired one, a hand constructed one. So we'll have a few traces like where we would have jumper wire and things like that for for uh, our hand wired versions. Then the uh, black and white amps, the Sweet 16, the 30, uh, Texaplex 2, and the Dallas 2. It's a, a it's more of this concept where we have more traces, double-sided traces. It's, again, the copper and the traces are huge. It's just like we're trying to make them emulate hand-wired construction just with the uh, PC board. Um, build everything up by hand. This is the way we get them, and then we put them together ourselves. So it's still quite hand-intensive. Um, you know, we'll have things in the circuit, actually, that we do a, a tweak per amp, like we have a reverb pan that's a little too hot, we'll tweak, we'll tweak it where we get it under control. Uh, not too much of that's going on, but, but just knowing that components are going to vary just slightly. And that's kind of what the boutique market is famous for, where they'll hand tweak each amp for customer and or for the tone that they're trying to achieve. You know, we, we still do that kind of thing. We run these things when we're building them through a gauntlet of like four checks. The initial guy checks on, you know, obviously his own work. He passes it to the next guy. They swap the amps. They check them. Then we put uh, the amps on a scope. We burn them in. We, uh, we go through an extensive process to try to make them fail before they get out in the field. Uh, we hammer the tubes. We have piled the preamp tubes that we cause to fail. We hear them in there in the uh, sound room in there uh, going bad, and we all give a holler or a sigh whenever we hear one give up the ghost. Uh, but we're trying to do everything we can to make them, to toughen them and harden them before they get out in the field. So, uh, and then we have one last check where we have one person, Josh, that plays these amps over and over doing the same lick and doing the same tweaks on the volume knobs. And you'll find variances between the amps that are so subtle that we can't hear them sometimes, but he'll say, this one's not reacting exactly right with the treble, and we'll go in, and maybe we had a 500K pot or something, and the treble's at a 250K. That's just totally um, contrived right there, but uh, but he can hear these things, so Josh is our safety net, and once Josh signs off on it, I feel real good about it. And you're still gonna get beat up by the, uh, by the uh, delivery system and things like that, and we're still gonna have a few, but we're trying, our best to make these things get to the end user in perfect condition. I'll use good parts. Um, I'll use. I'll, I'll try. You know, we even have new old stock parts that we we have around here. The old mustard cap. Um, this is a. Uh, I think retail these are going for about seventy dollars. We'll try things in the R and D department just to see if they do sound that much better. This one happens to be just a really, really good sounding cap, uh, which we haven't employed this because its little brother, we feel like sounds really, really good too. So we do employ these. Um, I personally am learning so much by being thrust into this, this high energy situation with amps. It was something that I did on the weekends. Uh, back in Texas, and um, I didn't have the resources or as much time or energy to put into what I was doing back then. So I didn't really uh, move out of my uh, comfort zone very much. Here with Paul and with all the help that I get here and people here in the shop with great ears, um, I am pushed into areas that I never thought I would go to. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's really been uh, invigorating to learn so much, you know, from a personal basis, too. Um, I guess that pretty much sums up kind of my situation here, and I'm, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream here, which I've heard many times, but I really am, and uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I couldn't have picked a better profession to end up my career with, and um, I just... Uh, Looking forward to the next 10, 15, 20 years and uh, putting out really great amps. Thank you very much.